Hi, in this tutorial we will have a closer look at Logic Pro's built-in EQ. We use EQs to change the tonal balance of a particular sound. We might want to increase the bass on a kick drum or lower the brightness of a violin for example. It's probably the most important processor that we have when it comes to mixing as we can use it to clean up our mixes and create a better sense of space and balance within a mix. One way to think of an EQ is to think of it as a frequency dependent level control meaning that you can choose which frequencies within the sound you wish to either cut or boost. There are different types of EQs, but the one we are going to look at now is called a parametric EQ. Let's start by soloing out the kick drum. As you can see, we already have a gate inserted on the track to help isolate the kick drum sound. That means that the EQ will only affect the kick drum sound and not any of the microphone spill that's on the track. Next, insert a channel EQ or double click on the EQ space at the top of the channel strip. Now we can see the EQ graph. It consists of a center line with numbers on it. These numbers represent the frequencies in Hertz. The human ear can hear from 20 Hertz to 20,000 Hertz. So the scale represents the extent of what we can hear. The left of the graph shows low frequencies and the right side shows treble frequencies. The space above the center line will show frequencies that are boosted or made louder and the space below will show the frequencies that are to be cut or lowered in volume. The scale that we use to measure level cuts or boosts is called the decibel scale. This EQ is split into eight bands to deal with the different parts of the frequency spectrum. Starting on the left we have the low cut filter. This has to be turned on before you can use it and it's used to get rid of low frequencies that can accumulate in a mix. We can set the frequency of the low cut filter either by moving the red node or by typing in the box below. We can also change the slope of this filter as well. Next we have the low shelf band. This control is much like your bass control on your stereo. It's a blunt instrument that cuts or boosts everything below the selected frequency. It also has a slope control, much like the low cut filter. After that we have the low parametric band EQ. This type of EQ is a bell curve and can be more accurate in isolating a particular frequency. As well as adjusting the central frequency and level, you can also adjust the width of the bell curve using the Q control. The next three EQ bands are all parametric EQs, focusing on the low mid range, the high mid range and the high range. Finally, we have the high shelf EQ, which is the opposite of the low shelf EQ. And then we have the high cut filter, which does the same job as the low cut filter, but for high frequencies. So let's see what happens to the kick drum sound if we follow the instructions in the notes section. Firstly, use a low cut filter to eliminate some of the low end rumble. Set the slope to 48 dB octave and the frequency should be set between 40 and 70 Hertz. The Q should be around 0.6 and you want to keep the weight of the kick drum without having loads of low end rumble. The next adjustments may result in volume clipping as you will be boosting certain frequencies. So turn the channel fader down about minus 5 dB. Using the parametric EQ bands boost around 70 to 120 Hertz to add weight to the kick drum. This could be anywhere between 3 and 10 dB of boost. Using another band of the parametric EQ, cut the boxiness of the kick drum between 350 and 550 Hertz for about 3 to 10 dB. Q should be around 1. To bring up the attack of the kick drum, the beta sound, boost 3 to 10 dB between 2 kHz and 4 kHz using a Q value of around 0.7. So these EQ settings are a first fix, meaning that they may change when you heard in relation to all the other elements in the mix. So it's always a good idea to make use of the bypass button and compare the original sound with the EQ'd one. Have you made it better or worse? The principle of boosting the frequencies you like and cutting the ones you don't when using an EQ is pretty much the same for any instrument. There are also different EQs available in Logic. Maybe you could figure out how to use them.